Clouds parted, and our cosmos suddenly became much, much bigger. And throughout the 20th century, we have continued to peer deeper and deeper into our universe. In measuring distances, millions of light years became billions of light years. But was there a limit to how far we could see? In 1964, a chance discovery of a hiss of radio emission from all over the sky marked the limit of our observations. The cosmic microwave background radiation, whose light has been traveling for 13.7 billion years, marked the edge of the map. A boundary between the observable universe we can see and what we cannot. This, of course, leads us to ask just what is beyond the observable universe. Through the 20th century, telescopes got bigger and astronomers saw further, but with their paper and pens, the theorists were also hard at work. Building on the insights of Einstein and Friedman, astronomers now had a mathematical description of the cosmos. Belgian cleric Georges Lemaitre realized that the universe was not infinitely old, but had been born at a finite time in the past. He called this initial event the Cosmic Egg, the ultimate origin of the cosmos. And from this fiery birth and expansion in the Big Bang, the universe had been cooling and changing for billions of years. But what did their equations say about the size of the universe? They realized that the universe we see around us, the observable universe, must only be part of a much larger whole. Given the finite age of the universe, we can only see the bits from the universe from which we have received light. And beyond this observable space, there must be more. More universe, more galaxies, more stars, more planets. But how much can there be beyond the horizon? And it is here that we meet the first of our infinities. The cosmological equations suggested that there might be an infinite amount of space in all directions. As the universe most likely had no spatial curvature, then it had to go on forever. This might seem strange given that the universe was born a finite time in the past, expanding from a single point. But if the cosmic equations are correct, and the universe is infinite today, it always has been, even at its birth. From an infinitely dense cosmic egg, it has simply gotten less and less dense. And all we can observe is the small patch around us, our observable universe, embedded in the infinite. But as the cosmos ages, more and more of it should come into view as the observable universe grows. Eventually, we should be touched by the light of countless distant stars. And if we wait long enough, maybe an infinite amount of time, eventually, we will see it all. Or so we thought. But by the end of the 20th century, everything had changed. And this change shook our understanding of the universe to its very core. At the close of the 1990s, astronomers announced the unexpected discovery of the accelerating expansion of the universe. The culprit was dark energy, a mysterious, repulsive something that filled the cosmos. It was realized that galaxies were and are moving away from each other faster and faster. But what did this mean for our observable universe? As time marches on, our map will once again be plunged into darkness. We will begin to lose sight of galaxies outside our own. In about 100 billion years from now, all other galaxies will have vanished completely from view. Beyond our local stars, there will be nothing but the blackest black. At every moment, there is less and less of the universe we will ever be able to explore. Astronomers estimate that there are about 2 trillion galaxies within our observable universe, and that due to the accelerated expansion, almost 99% of those galaxies are already beyond our cosmic horizon. If we could set off in a spaceship skimming close to the speed of light, we would never arrive. But though we will never visit these distant worlds or feel the warmth of their suns, 
we can use a logic to deduce their properties. Let's start with the simplest picture of all, that beyond is an infinity of space in all directions, and that the universe over the horizon is just more of the universe we have here. Not exactly the same, just the same in character, born 14 billion years ago and containing more stars and galaxies. If we pick one of these galaxies at random, it will sit at the center of its own observable universe, surrounded by trillions of other galaxies. It will be at the center of its own bubble of observability in the infinity of the universe. Just as a Native American would have produced a different historical atlas to the Englishman Edward Quinn, so would their outlook be their own, but with a key difference. The inhabitants of this universe always have been, and always will be, completely separate from us. Being causally disconnected means that no light rays, no signals of any kind can be exchanged between the regions. They are beyond each other's horizons and are destined to be forever so. Universe upon universe out there in the void. And it is now things begin to get complicated. So let's start with new definitions. Let's call something like our observable universe simply a universe. So, beyond our horizons, there are countless other universes. But what do we call the universe that contains this myriad of individual universes? Welcome to the first level of the multiverse. It is important to note that this is just a multiverse, one of many ideas that carry that name the physicist Max Tegmark calling this a level one multiverse. Let's explore. As we know, in this particular multiverse beyond our horizon, there is possibly an infinite number of other universes, rich in stars and galaxies just like our own, with the potential for life, just like our own. However, if we follow this logic and think a little harder, a disturbing picture emerges. In our level 1 multiverse, each individual universe is roughly the same size. Each contains similar numbers of atoms arranged as planets, stars and galaxies. But with an infinity of space to play with, strange things can occur. Out there in the void, some of these universes will be identical to ours, absolutely and precisely the same. In this other universe, there will be a Milky Way galaxy containing a star identical to the Sun. And orbiting this star will be a planet identical to the Earth with continents, oceans, plants and animals. And of course, there are people. Everyone you know and don't know are there, playing out their copies of their lives. And finally, there will be another version of you watching this exact video. Such a situation would be vanishingly rare, with most universes being only roughly similar to our own, but a vanishingly rare percentage of infinity is still infinity. How far away is this doppelganger? Max Tegmark estimates something like 10 to the power of 118 meters. This is much, much larger than the roughly 10 to the 27 meter diameter of our universe. And of course, they are causally disconnected, so you will never interact with them. But they would be out there in the infinite, along with every possible variation. Anything that has a chance of happening must happen somewhere in the infinite. Somewhere in the level one multiverse. Of course, we are forever locked within our own observational universe. Forever bound to see nothing but our tiny patch. The infinite parallel worlds of the level one multiverse lost behind our cosmic horizon. And yet, this is just the beginning. This is just level one, just one mind-melting deduction from our laws of physics. There are three more levels in Max Tegmark's Multiverse of Multiverses, and with each step, our picture of the cosmos becomes even stranger. No one seems to remember what the M in M theory stands for. Some say mystery or perhaps magic. But to many, 
It stands for membrane, reflecting how the one-dimensional strings of string theory are drawn out into sheets or brains within the higher dimensions. This eases some of the mathematical issues facing string theory, but it does not solve them. And in truth, M-theory isn't yet a theory. It is more of an idea, a dream, a goal to which physicists are working. But it has brought one thing, however, into sharp relief. The original hope was that the theory of everything would be pure and unique. It would explain why the electron has the mass it does and why gravity has the strength it currently does. That hope died with M-theory. M-theory predicts that due to the intense heat in the first moment, the early universe would be featureless and simple. As the universe cools, the fundamental features of physics crystallize out. But this crystallization of the laws of physics would not be unique. There would be uncountable ways that this crystallization could occur, each resulting in different fundamental physics, different particle masses and different forces. Physicists refer to this myriad of possible combinations of the laws of physics as the string theory landscape. How many solutions are there out in the landscape? Nobody really knows. It might be 10 to the power of 500, or it might be infinite. Once again, our supposedly fine-tuned universe finds another dice to roll. And indeed, some physicists have gone much further and suggested that these possible universes are not just possible, they really do exist. In this picture, the multi-dimensions of M-theory, an entire universe can exist on a membrane or a brain. And in this space of multi-dimensions known as the bulk, there are an uncountable number of brains. For each universe floating in the bulk, the crystallizing features of physics will be different. Differing universes will find themselves at differing locations in the string theory landscape. There are clear parallels to the bubble multiverses of eternal inflation. As we've already seen, a random mix of physical laws is most likely to end up with a universe that is simply dead and sterile. And as the vast multiverse of eternal inflation brings about a desolate graveyard, so too would the M-theory bulk be a grim sight. But every so often, somewhere in the mix, there would be a universe that won the multiverse lottery. And unsurprisingly, we find ourselves in such a lucky universe. Of course, given the undeveloped form of M-theory, much of this is pure speculation. We don't know if the string theory landscape is real or if universes do exist as brains in the bulk. But to some physicists, M-theory simply feels right and a brain multiverse feels inevitable. Only time and intense mathematical effort will tell. And so, the fog of unknowing has retreated and revealed a plethora of possible level 2 multiverses. Some contrasting, some able to work in harmony, some currently in scientific favour, and some out. Our finite observable universe sits within its larger, infinite multiverse perhaps crystallizing from eternally inflating bubbles, or reborn in fire from a previous multiverse, or resting on a vast brain floating in the bulk of hyperspace.